Welcome back, Slade, from your vacation. We have gaming news for you. That's right, guys. Uh, I am back, and uh, quite a bit happened in the week I was gone. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this underway. Um, Tencent becomes the majority shareholder of Techland. Yeah. If you don't know, Techland have made, a, and I assume you have heard of this series, Slade, the, uh, the Dying Light games. That is correct. Yeah. I have indeed heard of the Dying Light games. Yeah. Never had the, uh, you know, privilege of playing them, but I have heard of them. Yeah, so, yeah, Tencent is going, uh, are in the process of becoming their majority shareholder. Now, Tencent, major major tech company you've been hearing a lot about them lately typically they just buy minority shares in a lot of companies like name a gaming company tencent probably has like a couple percent stock in that company including like nintendo sony you know all all of them but typically you don't hear about them becoming a majority shareholder uh yeah i don't think this is the uh I think the last company they became a majority shareholder of and actually ended up owning the company entire was Riot Games. Oh god, yeah, Riot Yeah, Riot Games. Man, that that's a big one, by the way. Riot. Games. But speaking of which, we actually have news about Riot yeah. this week coming as well. Yeah. But uh yeah, like I said, it's just pretty interesting that uh you know, Tens became a majority shareholder of this company. And actually I lied to you, the last company they became a majority shareholder of was uh De the company that makes Desi Bungie. Oh, Bungie. That's interesting. Yeah. Wait, who got acquired by Sony? <laughs> yeah, which is crazy. <laughs> yeah, but uh, Techland, note that they will retain full ownership of IP, maintain creative freedom, continue to operate the way we believe is right. And uh, Mr. Mr. P well, will all will continue to serve as the CEO. So... Interesting that Tencent is uh, getting into, uh, into this this game, but uh, that's not all. That's not Wait, all. There's more. Uh, so <laughs> Tencent has acquired key parent company Visual Arts, who I believe own con the game developer Concept, and uh, they also have a whole bunch of I think anime now in their yeah. fucking. <laughs> they have quite a bit of iconic anime like Clanid for example. So if you've heard of Clanid, which I feel like a lot of anime fans have, yeah, yeah that's this company. Yeah, so god damn it, can we cool it with the acquisitions for a hot minute? It feels like every other week we're covering an acquisition of some type <laughs> on this fucking channel. <laughs> oh, yeah, it feels like that, honestly. It fucking... Um, God, it fucking feels like it. Speaking of feeling about things, um, I don't know how to feel about this one. Uh, the ESRB, the uh, the ratings board, uh, have proposed facial age estimation technology for parental consent. So there is an update, but we'll first have the original. Uh, story here, the e the Entertainment Software Rating Board proposed a new verification mechanism which it says will ensure parental consent is properly obtained under COPPA. You remember COPPA, right, Slade? The thing that a lot oh, of people yeah. said we're gonna take down YouTube, and well, it didn't take down YouTube, it certainly hurt YouTube, more so in the long run than uh, people thought, but yeah. According to COPPA Services, uh, must gain parental consent to collect uh, personal information from children under the age of 13. The ESRB's proposal titled Privacy Protective Facial Age Estimation would use facial age ass assurance software to verify the age of the parent if their estimated age is lower than the threshold. 25 is the proposal, which I am only a year older than that. Funny enough. Yeah, I think this is uh, pretty pretty dumb it's, for the most part. Like, obviously we need better, like, privacy laws, but yes. I, I don't know if this is thing. it. I don't know if this is it. No, this isn't. This is definitely not it. And I also feel like this is more of uh, they're trying to curb like, late teenagers like 18 to 
20 year old from buying video games for kids, right? Instead I'd, of like parents. I, I, but, or yet, I don't know. Yet. Uh, so I feel like this isn't going to change anything. Yeah, this ain't. This it's is... just taking people's, you know, photos without their consent. And, you know, there's a lot of really young looking parents out there, too. A true. That, like, facial recognition technology isn't going to be 100% on point. Like, there's always going to be flaws. Yeah. Uh, so the board is teaming up, has developed the mechanism with Yoti, a digital ID platform, and Super Awesome, a company specializing in online child safety tools. Super Awesome fucking acquisitions. Super Awesome, apparently, was acquired by Epic Games in 2020. What the? Mm. A- always something with an acquisition. Uh, so- oh, wait. Okay. But the ESRB made an uh, an X thread. Thanks, Elon. <laughs> but uh, a thread on X uh, saying, yeah, there have been several inaccurate misleading stories published about a recent application with the FTC for the new verifiable parent consent. Uh, the application was co-submitted uh, to the FTC by the ESRB. Uh, despite some reporting and social commentary on the contrary, the ESRB is not seeking approval to implement this technology to scan children's faces to determine if they are old enough to purchase, download, and or play a video game. We don't recommend the use of this technology for that purpose, nor do we have any intention uh, of doing so in the future. We'll see. That's all I'm going to say on that. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, the application is asking uh, for... Uh, approval on a new form of VPC, which is required under the under COPPA to ensure that companies are not collecting personal data from children under the age of 13 without a p- parent's consent. The new method, uh, powered by Yodi, blah blah blah, it uh, asks that a parent uh, provide a live facial scan. Uh, this is then encrypted and broken down to estimate if the parent is over the age of 25. A yes or no is passed by the company. Any image is and data used for this process are never stored. Used for AI training, which yes, that's been a bigger deal than ever before. <laughs> used for marketing or even sent to the operator. The only piece of information that is communicated to the company requesting VPC is a yes or no as to whether the person is over 25 and yeah. So like, this is a weird one. Like, I'm all for more privacy laws. But I don't know if this is the mechanism to do so. Maybe it'll get. I don't think so. Maybe the technology will get better in the future where it's more like, uh, good. But I don't know. But what are your last thoughts on this, Slade? Honestly, I just feel like this is kind of dumb. I feel like if they're trying to uh, protect children from, uh, you know, gathering data and privacy laws and whatnot. I don't think this is the way to do it, purely because this is just basically saying, okay, we won't do it on the kids, but we'll do it to their parents instead. Yeah. (laughs) And I'm just, I still feel that's kind of slimy. Yeah. So, but that's all on that. Um, Xbox has introduced a new, or is going to be introducing, a new tier of Game Pass called Game Pass Core this September. Uh, Game Pass Core is the evolution of Xbox Live Gold. Game Pass Gold will give players access to advanced multiplayer network. (sighs) A selection, a select collection of over 25 games to play with friends around the world and exclusive member deals, all for $9.99 USD a month or $60 a year. And uh, here are the lineup of games, Slade. Um, Yeah, I could read them out for you. Yeah, read them out. Okay, we have Among Us... Descenders, Dishonored 2, Doom Eternal, Fable Anniversary, Fallout 4 and Fallout 76, Forza Horizon 4, Gears 5, Grounded, Halo 5 Guardians, yuck, (laughs) Halo (laughs) War 2, um, Hellblade, Send You a Sacrifice, I've been meaning to play that game, Human Fall Flat, Inside, Ori, The Will of the Wisp, Psychonauts 2, State of Decay 2, the Elder Scrolls Online, Tamriel Unlimited. Okay, it's an okay lineup. 
it's an okay. Yeah, I think the lineup's okay, especially considering that if you're already paying for uh, Xbox Live Gold, yeah. Um, I feel like that this is just an upgrade to that service overall because you're getting basically free games to play with it as well. Yeah, uh, also play Psychonauts 2, for God's sake. One of my game of the years. I but... do think the list is a little underwhelming. Yeah, especially compared to, um, you know, the rest of Game Pass. Because, uh, yeah, so we now have four different tiers slayed of, of Game Pass. We have Core for $9.99 a month, the console at Game Pass for $10.99 a month, the PC Game Pass for $9.99 a month, or the, the, the Enchilada Ultimate for 17 bucks a month. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, for current Xbox Live Gold members, uh, on September 14th, Xbox Live Gold members will automatically become Game Pass Core members with no change in pricing and have immediate access to a new library. Uh, member deals and discounts will also be part of it. Games with Gold will come to an end on September 1st. They should have ended that a long time ago because they started to not get, like, good with the games with gold, you know, considering Game Pass. So, like, finally. Uh, players can continue to access any Xbox One games they previously redeemed through Games with Gold if they remain a Game Pass Core or Game Pass Ultimate member. Uh, and regardless of subscription status, any Xbox 360 titles redeemed via Games with Gold in the past will be kept in a player's library. So, th there we go. Say bye to Game Pass, er, say bye to Games with Gold, and say hello to Game Pass Core. Like, do you think they expand the lineup of Game Pass Core games, or do you think it just stays these 25 games? I think they do expand the uh, games included with Core, mostly to be first-party titles that they haven't included yet. Yeah. I say, um, like they said in the article, they said new titles are going to be added two to three times a year. So I imagine when it's all said and done, they have this for like 10 a year, so we'll have maybe 50 titles total. Yeah. Yeah, which... Yeah. But... <laughs> it's kind of interesting that we can Ori... And the Will of the Wisps, and not the original title yeah, with that, it as well. That that may, you know, a Slade, maybe that will be added in the uh, the two to three times a year. Just like, you know, there's Psychonauts 2, but not Psychonauts 1. There's State of Decay 2, but not 1. There's Halo Wars 2, but not Halo Wars. There's... I was going to say I'm a little shocked Halo Infinite multiplayer isn't a part of this, because that, that really needs a shot in the arm right now. <laughs> Well, isn't the multiplayer, like, free? Oh, yeah, that is true. So I think that's why. And the only thing you'd get was the Halo Infinite campaign. Uh, that's true. But, uh, that's true. Yeah, um, honestly, like I said, it just seems like it's a straight upgrade for gold. Oh, absolutely. But it does kind of feel like it's very similar to the Nintendo drip feed of... Uh, previous games at, look at so. look at least microsoft has given a guarantee on when new new drops are happening <laughs> that's true god. You, you don't get that with nintendo yeah god n64 state fans are still fucking waiting up for nso <laughs> uh but speaking of uh drops let's go ahead and cover this tidbit of news so uh earlier this week um Riot Games announced the advent of a new fighting game that has been in the works for quite a while called Project L. Oh, yeah, Project L. So, Project L is a two-on-two -two traditional fighting game. That's right, two-on-two. -two. Not, you know, you play as two characters and you swap between them, kind of like other games like Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite and whatnot. You could have up to four players all controlling their characters, mm -hmm. in a two-on-two -two fighting game. Interesting. Which is a fascinating concept. So, uh, they announced that this game is, uh, there's a beta for the game that was actually currently playable by select individuals like streamers and whatnot, and that is going to be playable at EVO that's, this year. That's big. That's big. Playable at EVO? That's insane. Yeah, so... Right now, there's only three announced playable characters, Dar Darius, Echo, and Ari. Um, for those who play League of Legends, they're 
fan favorite popular character, so everyone's pretty familiar with them. Um, it seems like there's a total of ten character slots total. So I'm, I'm, I don't I'm, know if we'll get more than that. I imagine we will because their league has a roster of like 140 characters. Yeah, I'm counting about actually 11 or 12. Yeah, on on there, but yeah, like imagine if they put every League of Legends hero in this game. <laughs> I think that would take a lot of work and effort. Well, I don't know how many but, uh, League of Legends heroes there are, so... <laughs> Bro, there's like 140. It's Holy crazy. shit! You're joking. No, but we'll look it up. How many, like, uh, there's I'll, I'll a have lot have... of League of Legends champions. God damn. But, uh, yeah, that's going to come out later this year. And like I said, it's got a very fascinating concept behind it. A Riot Games kind of has been innovating on already done um what's the word i'm looking for already like types of games that are already made but then they introduce something new and fascinating to them yeah so uh look forward to that when that comes out yeah look forward to that and look forward to all the coverage from the uh well, from the fighting game folks so and speaking of microsoft mm-hmm. um we got we got some uh, financial numbers. Uh, m- more so, we're gonna focus on the Xbox side of of things. But uh, so uh, Xbox hardware revenue dropped thirteen percent in quarter four. So it's likely Microsoft are still suffering with the demand for the Xbox consoles. Uh, Xbox content and services revenue uh, went up five percent. Overall gaming revenue went up. One percent. Microsoft has expected low to mid teens for Xbox content and services revenue, so the five percent was a miss. Uh, Microsoft said Game Pass has grown to twenty five million subscribers in January twenty twenty two, but there hasn't been an update on that in more than eighteen months, which is yikes. Uh, no other numbers were offered, and uh, yeah. Um... More on the Xbox Game Pass numbers, because those are increasing. Mm-hmm. They're stalling on the console side, but they're actually seeing a very large increase in uh, subscriptions for people who play on PC, which uh, yeah. to me actually makes quite a bit of sense that the PC side would be a bit more successful than the console side. Yeah, even... Larger install base and all that. Yeah, which which makes sense. Uh, the... Microsoft CFO offered what's to expect for the company's uh, upcoming uh, financial gaming performance for quarter one, 2024. Xbox content and services should be up in the mid to high single digits with overall gaming revenue expected to be up mid single digits, which I feel like that's low considering, you know, guess what game's coming out that quarter? Fucking Starfield. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. So I'm guessing they're not expecting Starfield to go like super crazy, which if it's a game that is the quality people expect it to be, then they should expect it to go crazy. But considering that they've had, you know, multiple flops in a row. Yeah. And then Halo Infinite wasn't anywhere near as successful as like they needed it to be. I imagine they're just putting lower expectations out for their shareholders so that they're surpassed. Yeah, which which is which is fair. Uh I, I guess maybe they're also there's also the possibility Starfield turns out to be a shit show. Cause this is the I believe Starfield is the first big like Bethesda game since like there's been more scrutiny on like bugs and and all that stuff. Yeah, I mean, you also had the release of Doom and Doom Eternal as well, but... Well, yeah, but those don't... No, I'm with you. This is the largest Bethesda game that's been released since the maligned release of Fallout 76. Yeah. (laughs) So, like, obviously, if it game's really buggy and stuff on release, it's going to face a lot of scrutiny, but... Again, I think this is one of those titles where there's a lot riding on it, and Microsoft really can't afford for it to fail. Yeah. I mean, they can't afford it, like, monetarily, but, like, it would obviously not be very good for them if it did. Yeah, and uh, some other sad news from this. Uh, Microsoft has ended the Game Pass friends and family plan. Come on, Microsoft. What the fuck? Yeah, they Come probably on. did that because they need 
or want more subscriptions. Yeah. Yeah. In general, the, but it does suck. It feels like a lot of these subscribe services are getting rid of family plans and whatnot. Yeah. God. Nint Microsoft just had to be the latest on that trend. Nintendo, don't ever get rid of your family plan, please. <laughs> please. Uh, yeah. Microsoft had been hoping to, of course, the Activision Blizzard deal. They're hoping to finalize it. Uh, the deal deadline uh, got extended uh, until October 18th. So there's your update on that story, by the way. And uh, yeah, that's that's it for the game pat for the Microsoft financial numbers. Little little depressing because Microsoft cannot get consoles on the ground. And I maybe this might be a hot take. I feel like the way Microsoft did the Xbox Series S, having less memory and stuff, is gonna come back to bite them in the ass. Cause that's, yeah, cause, I'm, I'm inclined to agree. Because we've been hearing more and more developers, or some game developers, complaining about, like, oh, fuck, we have to make the, an Xbox Series S version. Uh, and even, I think, Baldur's Gate 3 is getting delayed by about a month or so for the Xbox version because they have to make it with the Xbox Series S in mind, and they've been having trouble with the split-screen multiplayer because of memory on the Xbox Series S, which is lower than the X. So, very, very interesting dynamic. And, uh, Slade, speaking of interesting dynamics, we have our favorite game to cover on the show is back again. <laughs> That's right. Uh, ignoring the fact that our Super Mario RPG videos are taking off. Uh... Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl has announced its sequel in Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 2, nice. which will feature every character from the first game, some new ones as well as some new game modes. Yeah, so uh, first off, uh, the, the campaign uh, on the website uh, says to jump into a all-new original story featuring roguelike mechanics. <laughs> what? Okay, roguelike mechanic slate. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, it's also got like an arcade mode and boss rush. And it's what? kind of crazy. I kind of wondering how they're gonna put roguelike mechanics into a fighting game, but uh, I, yeah. It, well, it seems like it's only the campaign, but yeah, I'm very curious. Like, I does that mean like the adventure changes like every time you play it? That'd be that nuts. could be like everyone gets their own character specific adventure, but uh. No, there's definitely some interesting stuff that they could do there. Yeah. They're also um, adding in um, what I call the equivalent of Smash Balls with new super abilities yeah. as well. And uh, yeah, we already had uh, a character. We already had a couple of characters announced. We're getting Squidward from SpongeBob and Jimmy Neutron. Yeah. But, uh, um, and apparently, uh, have you ever seen the meme of... Uh, Slade when Squidward does the like the kick and he's like oh boy got that janky janky ass hitbox. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, that's yeah, that's that's fighting a, games in a nutshell. That, it's great. That, that's a move. Literally, that that pose is in the game. That's a move of Squidward's. That's incredible. And we're getting Jimmy Neutron over because it, it's assumed Hugh will be back, so father and son can smash bros together. <laughs> uh. Voice acting, of course, which was added. I think we covered this when it happened with yeah. the original game. Voice acting was added in, uh, but it's confirmed it's going to be here at launch. Uh, and more, a new online experience, including cross-play and, and an updated lobby system. Bravo. And if I'm not mistaken, rollback netcode was already a thing with the original, so this will probably have rollback as well. Yep, uh, new costumes, unlockable rewards, and improved training mode. Nick Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 2 is bigger and better than ever. Uh, and we do have a release date for this game, Slade. Um, it is probably one of the most unfortunate release dates. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's releasing, I believe, was it, October 24th, the same day as... Uh, Super Mario Bros. Wonder and like two other heavy hitting titles. It's releasing around the same time as Super Mario Bros. Wonder, as Slade mentioned, and Spider Man 2. Yeah, Spider Man 2 was the one I was thinking uh... of. Yeah, so uh, it definitely isn't doing itself any favors. Yeah. <laughs> really and not only that, it also 
that is it doing any favors because like the idea of the Nickelodeon crossover is kind of the novelty of the idea is kind of worn off. Yeah. Hey, well, they have updated like graphics game looks much better than it was before. It features the voiceovers and stuff like that. Like it's going to be an improved experience overall. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But I don't feel like this game's being put in a position to be successful. We'll we'll see. Like obviously the two other games we mentioned, they're they're different genres. There there's a two point five D platformer versus a Sony third person over the shoulder action adventure game, and then a platform yeah. fighter. So they're different enough genres that they don't cross over. But in terms of getting the attention of the gaming world, yeah, it's not great. You're competing against two of the big threes, um, arguably biggest games of the year. Yeah. So, Not only that, but, like, I also feel like they're on this. Yes. They're not catering enough towards casuals. Well, so. well, th- at least from what we've seen, maybe maybe we'll see some stuff more over the years that, or over the months, that uh, is showing, yeah, we're also going to cater to the casual market as well. Certainly hope so, but... uh yeah, one of our favorite, you know, games to come from the channel uh, we're, has returned. We're we're not gonna go ham. We're not gonna go nuts on on character predictions. We're not gonna be doing character prediction videos like we did with Nick All Star Brawl One. But I'm gonna put you on the spot a little bit. One character. Give me a, a new character prediction. Just one. Okay, one new character prediction. Well, I think we're probably, because we have Jimmy Neutron and Hugh, mm-hmm. as well as uh, Jenny, the teenage robot, yeah. I think we'll see Timmy Turner and the Fairly Good Parents. Ooh, probably. that's a good, ooh, that's a good one. That's a good prediction. Ooh. All right, I'm going to predict somebody out of left field. You know how uh, Reptar was the, like, out of left field character you could say from like the yeah. uh i don't know if this character rings a bell to you uh the powdered toast man yes i know a lot of people have been wait hold on isn't the powdered toast man already in the original game i don't believe so yeah he is oh he um, is in the game yeah he's a, yeah he's in the game he they gave him fox's shine yeah he's already oh in the game that program. shows my fucking lack of knowledge of this bro game. like the crazy thing about that is I think we were talking about that. We were like, you know what? We want the crimson chin. You know what? In here as nah, well. that's my prediction. Crimson chin. <laughs> nah. Yeah. Uh, nah, don't crimson... worry, guys. We stand the yeah. crimson chin we, we, on this channel. Yeah, the crim- crimson chin for Nick All Star Brawl Two. <laughs> there we go. Uh, but yeah, that's that's gonna be it for the gaming news this week. A little little quirky bit of news this week, and I still can't believe. Nick All-Star Brawl 2 is a legitimate thing that we are seeing and living through that's releasing to the, to the market. In, like, what? It's releasing in, like, three months? <laughs> that's fucking crazy. Ah, uh, All right. Yeah. Yeah. This has been Byron. And this has been Slade. And we will see you all next week. Bye-bye, everybody.